morning, everybody. Wilfie here. It is 7.06 a.m. on the 19th of December, 2019. Because you couldn't tell from the date this was published what day it is. Uh, anyway, I'll shut up. Yeah, I'll shut up for the next 15 minutes. <laughs> now, I want to vent a little bit about uh, gaming journalists today, so it's going to be one of those. Feel free to skip this if you're not into that. Uh, but first, maybe before you go, I have to comment on something else because uh, it, of course, is a big news uh, today. It finally happened. The, the Democrats in the House of Representatives impeached Donald Trump. Now, <laughs> um, I'm only going to comment briefly with just, you know, very, very limited commentary. One, it's not going to work. Two, it's hilarious that some people are so poorly educated that they think this automatically kicks Trump out of office. Newsflash, it doesn't. Uh, he's been accused now, formally. Now there has to be a trial in the Senate. Most, a lot of people don't know that, so they're celebrating that now Trump's going to be kicked out of office. Anytime now. Their disappointment's going to be so sweet to see. Uh, the funny part is the Democrats in the House are now acting like they're, they're talking like they're not actually going to send the articles of impeachment to the Senate. Meaning, in their beady little brains, the Senate can't actually vote on the impeachment or hold a trial. It's a bit of a head-scratcher because the Democrats have been acting for months like, oh my God, we have to impeach him. This is terrible. We have to get him out of office. We have to do this before Christmas. It's so urgent. And now... We're going to sit on this for a while because we don't think the Senate's going to give it a fair hearing. So we're just going to hang on to this until the, the 2020 elections when we magically retake the Senate, they think, and, and yet somehow Trump magically stays president despite them winning the Senate. Figure that one out. Uh, and then they'll have the trial once they know they can kick him out. Yeah, electioneering, anyone? So anyway, Trump's poll numbers are going through the roof. Uh, impeaching him, of course, makes him a martyr, galvanizes and energizes his support base. This is going to be such a bloodbath for the Democrats in 2020. Uh, <laughs> they're going to lose the House. And Trump is going to stay president, of course. They're not going to regain the Senate. So the articles of impeachment that... He may be technically impeached, but it may never reach the Senate. Because if the because if the Republicans regain the House, they'll just quash the articles right there in the House and they'll never pass it along. And if they if the Democrats push the articles through to the Senate before the election, the Senate will just toss it. Um so isn't it interesting how there's no scenario where the actual facts of this case or accusation matter? I mean, they're, they're straight up admitting that there's nothing at all to do. They don't care about any kind of truth. They just want them out. They don't, they don't give a shit whether what they're claiming is true or not. And there's no scenario where anyone seems interested in actually talking about the evidence or the accusations. They're just like, no, 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 kick them out. You won't kick him out, so we're not going to give you this this case. Blech. Real winner. And and now they've once the the uh, the psychopath part of the liberal side wakes up this morning and realizes, wait a minute, Trump is still in office. He's impeached, but why is he still in charge? Once they realize why, they're going to be so pissed. And then they'll realize, hey, we have to. This has to go to the Senate so that he can. You know, they can convict him and throw him out. Then they're going to realize, again, that the Democrats aren't sending it to the Senate. It's, this is political suicide for the Dems. I cannot believe they did it. And I, I guess I can, because they're just... They've been so fucking stupid. But uh, here they are, doing the unfathomable... And they're going to get their shit pushed in over this. They're going to lose the, the, the election big time. This impeachment's not going to go anywhere. And it's, it's, it's all so tiresome. You know?
know how much money they've wasted on this? Your taxpayer dollars have been wasted on this? Just think about that. No matter whose side you're on, it should piss you off. That it's it's just a wet fart and nothing's going to come from it. Anyway, enough of that. I also want to briefly mention, uh, before I get into this gaming journalist thing, kind of all over the map today, aren't I? Uh, there's a new Star Wars movie coming out. Uh, FYI, the lead character, Ray, I guess her name is, uh, is Palpatine's granddaughter. <laughs> Spoiler, surprise. Yes, I'm an asshole. But apparently the movie is utterly terrible. Even the critics hate it, which is saying something because you know Disney grease some palms to get some good reviews out there. And there aren't any. The, the critics are pretty unhappy about this movie. So you know that when even the shills hate it, it's probably very bad. And it is. I, I saw a, uh, I guess a cam of one of the climactic scenes of the movie, and it is so cheesy. But anyway, on to gaming journalism. I just had to laugh at Disney dropping the ball again on Star Wars. So yeah, uh, gaming journalism. There's this topic, it's come up a few times in the past, I'd say, two years. It's really gained some traction. This notion that games are too hard and journalists should not be expected to be good at games or actually play them all the way through when they give a review. And there's been this outcry, especially on games like, uh, what is it, Sekiro, some ninja game that's sort of like a Dark Souls uh, spiritual successor, and of course the Dark Souls series too. Uh, They just complain that, oh, it's too hard, it's inaccessible, you're cutting out so many players by by making these games too hard. And the funny thing is, yeah, you've got members of the public in general complaining about this, but it's hilarious when journalists start whining about it. Um, we get some some great examples of just how incompetent these people are when it comes to playing games. Uh, is it Dean? His name is Dean Takahashi or something like that. Uh, there was a video of him trying to play the new Doom back in 2016 when it came out. And it's kind of in the the spirit of the old Quake games and and the original Doom, where it's supposed to be high-speed action, lots of movement, and it's a a fast-paced FPS. By design, that's how you're supposed to play it. You're supposed to just move around like a jackrabbit, unleashing hell, just shooting every gun you have at every enemy that comes that, that throws itself at you. Well, this guy, there's a video of this idiot trying to play and completely bunging it up. Like, he was incapable of moving his character and aiming and shooting at the same time. And people are still trying to figure out how he was so awful at just the most basic parts of this game. Most just basic things you do, he was bad at. And the worst part is, he's a a so-called veteran journalist. He's been doing game coverage for 20 plus years. How the hell can you be involved in the gaming industry for 20 fucking years and not know how to play Doom? (laughs) It's one of the defining games of computer gaming, period. Wolfenstein 3D set the, you know, got the world used to 3D gaming. And then Doom refined it and made it more colorful and and added, you know, angled walls, that sort of thing. It improved the technology and it set the standard, the gold standard for how FPSs are supposed to work. And if this guy has been around for 20 years playing video games, he has to have been exposed to this. There's simply no excuse for not knowing how to play that game. 
than for being so awful at it after 20 years of so-called practice. So what it really means is the guy's a hack. He doesn't know what he's doing. Uh, he's not really a games enthusiast. He's just glommed onto an industry that gives him a steady paycheck. Now, when that video was published, and he was utterly terrible at it, and people made endless fun of him, as they should, he, of course, got viciously butthurt. And this is a common theme with journalists in, in general. You criticize them or, or claim that they're no good at their jobs, and oh my god, you have you may as well have, have insulted their moms, because it's just, they can't take it. And he very understandably had a nervous breakdown, like they always do. And then the, uh, I think he worked for Polygon. It was a, it was an infamous Polygon video, I think, that lended credence to the, to the idea that, you know, Polygon are a bunch of hacks, too. And the reason people argued that is that they went ahead, as, as terrible as this guy's gameplay video was, they published it anyway. They ran with it. And then when people criticized him and made fun of him, they circled the wagons yet again and started whining about how gamers are toxic, fuck you, and how games are just too hard. And so, of course, the, the social justice clique that's trying to nose its way into gaming picked up this mantle and ran with it that, hey, games are too hard, they're too inaccessible, they need to be easier. The, the funny thing is, they, they talk about accessibility. But when they do that, they're not talking about actual accessibility features for the disabled. There are accessibility options that you can add to a game that actually make it more accessible to people who really need the help. Uh, colorblind mode for people who are colorblind changes the, the colors of the UI so that they can read everything that they need to see. Uh, changes the whole game palette, the color palette, so that they have a better chance of playing the game and enjoying it. Uh, you can add support for uh, unconventional controllers. Uh, Microsoft has one, uh, has a couple pieces of hardware for uh, disabled people who you know, can't quite use their hands the way most of us do, so they have alternate inputs. So a game adding support for that is an accessibility feature. Adding closed captioning is an accessibility feature for gamers who can't hear so well or that are deaf. Stuff like that is actual accessibility. These people aren't talking about that. They never bring that up. They, they never bring up disabled gamers. And they claim, that they just whine that it's too hard. Now the funny thing is, with, uh, I think, that I, got, I may be butchering this name, but the game is Sekira, and it was, like I said, it's a Dark Souls sort of uh, successor. They were claiming, well again, well, journalists were whining that it was too hard, and you know, idiots like Risa Terra, of course they whine about everything, but they're on the, oh, games are too hard bandwagon. Oh shit, I forgot to turn. <laughs> almost talked my way through my exit. You guys should catch me. Get off my back, man. Um, but no, while these idiots were whining about the game being too hard, a legitimate quadriplegic man with minimal use of his hands available to him published a video on YouTube of uh, showing him playing Sakura, or whatever the name is, front to start to finish, beating its ass, I mean, just completely dominating this game with nothing but his limited function hands. There was a camera showing his hands using a special controller uh, to beat the game. So there went this, it's too hard nonsense. If a guy who barely has use of his hands can beat this game, anyone can. And he said it. He, he came right out and said that. Like, you people are bitching about nothing. You're just, you know, get good, scrub. That's all this is. So there's a, uh, of course, that, that pissed people off, too. Like, how dare you suggest that we suck at games? Like, well, you do. What are we supposed to say? 
So naturally, they want video games to be easier. And it's led... I don't think this will ever take off. I wish it would. I, I would... Uh, I would dance a happy jig, and I would film it and post it to the internet. My big old fat ass dancing. That's kind of scary, isn't it? Now they'll do it, now that I've said that. But I would love to see game developers introducing super easy modes. Ah, oh, shit, what are you doing? Yeah, super easy game modes. Where the difficulty is just in the at the floor. Yeah, the, you're, you're practically invincible. Your enemies are weaklings. There's you know no complex moves or maneuvers or anything you have to do. It's basically press X to win. But they have to call it game journalist mode. It has to disable achievements or trophies or whatever you call them. And it has to lock their avatar to a baby wearing a bib and with a pacifier in its mouth. It has to mercilessly mock these worthless bastards for being unable to actually competently play the game. So I would love to see them do this. I, hell, I'd love to see one game developer actually implement a gay game journalist mode that reduces the game's difficulty. It's funny because uh, Wolfenstein actually does this. Uh, if you play on the easiest difficulty, it shows you as a baby that your character portrait's a, a guy wearing a pin and a pacifier. On that same subject, there was this a great self-own, I guess, is the way to put it. Uh, about a year and a half ago, I forget the name of this game. I'll have to go look it up and throw it in the, the video description because this is hilarious. So a reviewer published a game, or pub published a review about this game, and one of the complaints they made, they didn't like it, one of the complaints they made was it was too short. You know, the, the story just gets revved up and then suddenly it's game over. And, you know, there's a very anticlimactic ending. And so he included that as part of the review. Well, the game developer caught hold of that review and said, you lying sack of shit. You know, he didn't use that word, but called him out for lying and said, well, you played the game on easy. You played the game on easy mode. How can you claim... Why are you claiming this game is too hard? And the journalist goes, no, uh I played it on, on regular. And the developer came back and said, no, you complained that the story was too short, cut itself off abruptly. That's because when you play on easy, it doesn't let you get to the end. It, only, it stops the game about halfway through. If you want the full experience, you have to play on medium or better, or normal or harder. Boom! Mic drop. <laughs> and this this uh, reviewer responded by just deleting that part of his complaints out of the review. He didn't whine anymore that the game was too short. He didn't address the fact that he played it on easy. He just silently edited his review to get rid of that complaint. It's just amazing. These are, these are absolutely worthless people who don't deserve any credence or respect or even attention. They're just, they've, they're scumbags and they've always been scumbags. It's, uh, it's an industry that's just filled with payola and it's a delight to watch them embarrass themselves time and again. So that's, that's all I had to say. I wanted to just rant about that a little bit. We need an easy game mode for all games and it needs to be called game journalist mode. Industry, get on that. Uh, that's, yeah, that's it for me for now. I'm almost at, almost to work anyway. So thanks for listening to today's rant. And, uh, I will be live streaming some more Stalker Shadow of Chernobyl this weekend because that game is a blast and I'm really enjoying it. And I'm playing it on Master, on the hardest difficulty setting. Take that, journalist. <laughs> Anyway, thanks for watching, guys. I'll catch you later.